Counterblast offers an intriguing setting of an alternate Earth future past in which players can adventure with unique crews drawn from five factions of their choice, including the warrior huntresses of the Niran Empire, the stalwart troops of the Galactic Defense Force, the merciless mechanical mechas, the freelance mercs and merchants for hire known as Lancers, or the alien and feared Ido Flini. Everything players need to know about a model to play the game is listed on their card. This includes the name, the faction, the level, the attributes of move, command, and initiative, individual skill ratings, any special rules, and vital signs and defenses, and finally the requisition points. Counterblast uses a dice pool system for determining outcomes during the game. The majority of dice checks are made using skill ratings. For example, a Lancer captain who makes a leadership check rolls dice equal to the first number in the leadership skill circle. For each die roll, the second number is added to the result, and each result that meets or exceeds a target number is considered a success. Target numbers vary based on what the model is attempting to do, but if one is not specified, the default of 7 applies. Some dice checks only require one success, while others require more. But in general, the higher the number on skill ratings, the better chance a model has for success. Tests made against attributes, such as initiative, use d10s equal to the value of that attribute and do not have any modifiers. Counterblast dice checks have two special results that always apply. A critical success occurs when a natural 10 is rolled. Natural 10s always count as a success, plus they grant a bonus die to the roll for even more chances of success. When a natural 1 is rolled, it always counts as a failure and it eliminates successes on a 1 for 1 basis. If there are ever more 1s than successes, the check is considered a critical failure and something bad usually happens in those cases. In this example, a 1 and a 10 are rolled together. The 1 eliminates the automatic success of the 10, however the bonus die is still awarded. In this case, a 7 is rolled, which happens to be the target for success, so the net result of this check is one success. Each crew has a leader, and their card is placed on a roster that lists the faction's special rules and helps track game conditions. Crew leaders can issue special orders to their crew, and the tokens that represent these orders are placed in this circle. Crew disarray represents the level of panic caused by the loss of other models and is tracked on this dial. As disarray increases, the chance of models panicking goes up as well. To begin a game, players select a scenario, place terrain, and deploy their crews. Once this is done, each player makes a check using their leader's initiative value. The player who scores the most fives or higher gets to choose who activates first. During the activation phase, players alternate performing actions with their models. Once activated, a model may perform two actions, one of which can be an attack. Actions include moving, shooting, close combat, rallying to overcome panic, and performing skill checks such as repairing a damaged robot, healing a wounded comrade, or using psionic abilities. Players can activate one model at a time or several as part of a group. When activating multiple models, players start by activating a single model, which is used to determine how many other models may be activated simultaneously. Any crew member with the leader special rule may activate any other crew member. Models without the leader special rule may only activate other models of the same type. The number of models that can be activated depends on the command of the activating model and the level of the models being activated. In this case, the Edo player activates a spawnling, which can activate two other spawnlings using its command rating of two. Once they have finished their move, the Lancer player activates one of his robots, which in turn uses its command to activate the other two robots. It's important to note that during the activation phase, all models must be activated at least once, although no actions have to be taken by that model. During the first turn, both players have activated their models and they just move towards one another. Once all activations are complete, the upkeep phase occurs where any scenario specific or faction effects take place. At the beginning of each turn, players make a crew initiative check to determine who gets to act first in the upcoming activation phase. This time, the Lancer player scores more successes and chooses to go first. The captain and the first mate are activated, and they both move towards the Edo. Using their marksmanship skill, they both perform a ranged attack against different models. In this case, the captain takes aim at the Edo leader. The captain gets two dice for his check and adds two to each roll. The target for success when making a ranged attack is either the body or mind defense of the target model. 
For the weapon being used by the captain, the target is the body defense of eight. The captain scores one success for one point of damage. The first mate targets the spawn lane and also has two marksmanship skill dice, but only adds one to each roll. The target for success is also the body defense, and he scores one success. The spawn lane only has one wound, so it is removed from play. The Edo leader takes a wound counter from the attack by the captain. The Edo player then activates the leader that just took a wound. That leader uses its command rating to activate three spawn lanes, one of which moves towards the lancers, while the other two try to sneak around the scout ship in hopes of surrounding their enemy. The leader and the spawn lane both take a shot at the first mate and score enough successes to remove him from play. The lost spawn lane isn't significant enough to increase crew disarray on its own, but if more losses occur, it could be a problem for the Edo. Losing the first mate is a significant loss to the lancers, and their crew disarray increases by one. Robots don't panic, but the captain just might, so this may become a concern for the lancers as well. As a response, the lancer robots all activate and move towards the Edo leader. Using a special rule called teamwork, they all pool their dice against the Edo leader. Teamwork grants a plus one modifier bonus when three or more models perform the same action. In this case, the robots score enough successes to remove the Edo leader from play. Since this was the Edo crew leader, it automatically adds one point of disarray. And with the loss of this model and the previous spawnling, it's enough to erase the disarray by another two for a total of three. Whenever crew disarray reaches a level higher than the command of a model, it automatically takes a panic token. In this case, all the Edo spawnlings each get a panic token. However, the remaining leader does not because his command is more than three. When models with panic tokens activate, they must attempt to rally by taking the leadership test with a target of seven. If no successes are scored, the model must perform a move action towards the nearest table edge. This is repeated every activation until they either overcome their panic or leave the table for good. This spawnling fails his check and retreats. The leader, which can immediately be promoted to the new Edo crew leader, is not deterred, however, and he moves towards the Lancer captain. Using his psionic attack abilities, he manages to put two wounds on the Lancer Captain. Play continues like this until the total number of turns has been completed or one side eliminates the other completely. While certainly playable as head-to-head -head combat, Counter Blast offers scenario-driven encounters where, besides defeating their opponent, each player has secondary goals, such as retrieving a valuable cargo of Altonium ore or rescuing a comrade crashed on a hostile planet. How well a crew achieves these objectives may grant that player additional victory points, which could turn a loss into a win. In keeping with the flavor of adventure serials where anything can and often does happen, Counterblast uses an event chart that is rolled occasionally during a game. This roll determines if some untoward event occurs which may benefit or hinder each player's crew, like the discovery of an extra medical kit or a sudden storm of acid rain. In Counterblast, the fortunes of even the best prepared crew can change from moment to moment providing challenge, thrills, and fun from game to game.